All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Brian Castelli. Uh, I'm la the, the manager of the team that is responsible for Metro E and its development and delivery. I have started recording for this meeting, so this will be made available online uh, later on. If you could all do me a favor and um, mute your microphones, unless you're uh, asking a question, that would be great. But what we wanted to do today is provide a webinar that uh, highlights a few things about this release that has just come out version 4.3 you've got some pretty cool new features and in particular we're going to highlight one of the new input methods that makes using metro ae simpler and easier at the very end of this we're going to have a, a time for you to ask questions in the meantime you can put your questions in the chat and we'll make sure we get to those by the end of the time so here we go all right get started so basically, here's the agenda. We're going to go kind of an introduction on Metro AE, a uh, high-level discussion of the new features. Then we're going to do a couple of uh, descriptions followed by demos of the new Excel spreadsheet input method. And I think this is going to really make things easier for folks to consume Metro AE, so that's great. We'll have a little bit of information about how you can find out more about this release and uh, all the rest of the things that we're doing. And then, of course, the Q&A time at the end. In terms of introduction, you know, what is Metro AE? So the AE stands for Automation Engine. Uh, and what it is, is we've produced a platform. And this platform can be used to produce solutions that automate operations that need to be done. And in particular, we're focused these days on installation, upgrade, and configuration of the NUASH Networks stack. That also includes health checks, which can be done, backup and restore, and so on. So we can do a whole bunch of things based on this platform. There are two ways to consume the platform. One is to consume it as a Docker container. The second one is as a GitHub clone. The Docker container takes care of all the prerequisites for you. You just have to have Docker running. You can consume the container that way. With uh, the GitHub clone, we provide a setup script, and you run that setup script. It, configures all of the prerequisites on that server, and then you can go ahead and run. There are several methods for producing input, providing inputs to the, uh, to the software. One is a command line wizard. You can execute a command that then sits, takes you through an interview process and it asks you questions about the deployment that you want to do or the upgrade that you want to do. Uh, there's also an Excel spreadsheet input, and that's what we're going to be highlighting today as we talk. Uh, and of course, then there, the main input is YAML files, and so you can edit the YAML files directly on your own if that, if that suits you. The YAML files are particularly good for implementing something called infrastructure as a code. So you can put your YAML files in your favorite SCM system and then check them out and then run Metro. So it's kind of a cool way to have uh, that kind of functionality. These inputs are organized into something, into what we call deployments. Each deployment is just a collection of your inputs. Uh, and it, you can have one deployment for a data center, one deployment for SD-WAN, one deployment for another SD-WAN, and so on. So you can have multiple deployments on disk, and we'll support having all of those. And of course, this is the Y Metro AE slide, and you know, automation is one of the things that helps us in a whole bunch of ways. And it's faster and more reliable than just doing things manually, right? You don't, there's, there's not so much opportunity to fat finger uh, in an SSH shell or, um, <clears throat> or you know, have delays, but it, it helps us to be more consistent and uh, we can predict what's gonna happen. Metro AE also has prerequisite checks built in. So it checks to make sure things are okay before it starts to increase the likelihood that everything's going to succeed. And then when it's done, we do health checks to verify that, hey, what we tried to accomplish actually did uh, happen. And we can strive very hard here to make sure that you don't need to write any code. There's no Python that you have to write or anything. It's all in the inputs. You provide the inputs describing what you want, and then we take care of the why or the how. The how. Uh, and Metro AE is built in a hierarchical fashion. And what I mean by that is you have a very high level command like install everything. You can say Metro AE install everything. 
and then it will trundle through your deployment files and it'll install everything that you have there and then come back with you with the answer, yep, it's all done. Or you can break it down step by step. We have had some customers, for example, who were interested in intermediate tests. They wanted to do a step, take a check, do check some things, do another step, check some things. And so you can also do step by step. And one of the things that this does is, you know, we have a couple of customers who the people who are doing the Nuage deployment do not own the infrastructure. And so they have to go to another group and say, hey, spin up a VSD VM for me, please. Well, you can, by using the step by step method with Metro, you can skip that part and then walk right into the deployment part where the VSD install script is executed and all that stuff. So we have flexibility built in there. And then our promise to you is that with every new Oz release, we will update and test Metro AE so that you have consistency in the way that you um, can operate across different Metro or different new Oz releases. All right, and so now I'll hand it off. Uh, at least uh, I said we'll be taking the new features. Okay, um, so can everyone see my screen? I can see it. Okay, so hi, this is Sanket, and uh, I'll be talking about some new features that went into Metro 4.3. So let's get into it. So now Metro supports the VSP version upgrade of, till 2010. So now you can upgrade from any ver 603 version to 2010, for example or you can do an in-place upgrade of a 2010 R1 to a 2010 R2. Uh, with the new release, we also support the stats out configuration deployment for VSDs. So you can deploy VSD in a stats out configuration. Uh, we also support uh, IPv6 configuration for the NUH. So the NUH can now be provided with an IPv6 address for the management port, uh, uh, management uh, address, the internal IPs as well as the external IPs. Uh, and we also support the geo-redundant in-place upgrade. So let's say if you have a geo-redundant cluster uh, using 603, you can upgrade it to 607 uh, using in-place upgrade. And uh, so only the VSD will be upgraded, uh, patched and nothing else. Uh, it, we have also made some improvements to SD-WAN portal installation procedure that we have. Uh, some other things uh, that we changed is now uh, when you do a container upgrade, the Metro E script automatically upgrades in the background. So you don't need to do that one more manual step of upgrading the uh, Metro E script. Uh, we also have a uh, folder support for vCenter. So you can deploy different uh, components on different folders. Uh, so let's say uh, uh, like VSD can be deployed on one of the folder and uh, VSAT can be deployed on another folder and you can specify specific folders for the, those. Uh, we also added support for IPv6 uh, in the vCenter environment. So now you can install uh, IPv6 components uh, in vCenter. Uh, we've also made some more enhancements for uh, NUH, including ability to provide one or more VRRPs and uh, um, enabling VSD configuration on the um, internal and external IP addresses uh, like the GUI port and things like that. Uh, we made the Python, uh, we made Metro AE and Metro AE config Python 3 compliant as well as uh, it continues to work on the Python 2. So uh, that work has been done. Uh, some other things, uh, now the Metro AE container is available on Docker Hub. Previously it was in a uh, private repo. So now that has been moved to Docker Hub. Uh, now Metro E configuration is also available as a pick package. So you can uh, do a pip install and get a Nuage Metro E config that way. Um, also the Metro E config can be now used through robot framework. 
and that is available as a pip package as well uh, the instructions for uh, using it are uh, in the link that are there and these slides will be provided after the meeting as well as the recording and with that uh, let's move to ishwar who will show us the excel spreadsheet deployment Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ishwar. Uh, I'm going to actually start by sharing my screen. So I'm going to be talking about Excel spreadsheets deployments for today. Um, so one of the feedbacks that we received from the field was uh, YAML files are sometimes complicated to write, and some people don't actually have understanding on what YAML files are. So what, uh, one of the things that we did as part of this exercise was to actually replace or add uh, additional capability of using spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheets as well in here. So this support has been added in Metro 4.3. To make it simpler, uh, ev in every Excel book, right, it, each Excel sheet will actually be defined for each component. And uh, there are some examples of the existing Excel sheets or some that we have provided in the examples directory under Excel. So I'm going to actually show you the Excel sheet now and show you how we can configure it. So as I was talking, um, as I was saying previously, um, so every Excel sheet in this Excel workbook is defined for each component. So the common.yaml actually goes, everything in the common.yaml goes into the common sheet here. So you can define all the variables here, like the unzip directory, the domain name, domain name that we need to use, the global FQDNs, uh, the DNS servers, and the NTP servers, what are your access bridges, the network bridges, and stuff like that. Can you zoom so in just a bit? So that we can uh, see the text a little bit more clearly. Sure. You got a little slider there on the bottom right hand of this window. There, that'll work. This is good. That's really big. Thanks. Okay. So anything that's actually highlighted in yellow are actually mandatory fields. So if you don't see anything that's highlighted in yellow, that means it's optional. And anything that's grayed out is an advanced feature. And uh, the thing about these things is, uh, as you can see, when I actually hover over any of those fields, it actually gives me an explanation on what those fields are, and how I can actually configure them, and what needs to be set up in there. So in this case, if you look at the VSDs, which I have already pre-propagated here, so I've given the uh, I've given uh, the VSD one example here, where I've defined the host name for it, the management IP address, the network prefix, the gateway, and the VM name. And uh, in this case, my target server is going to be a KVM time because that's what I'm going to be demoing today. So uh, one of the things that I want to mention is there are certain uh, fields that support dropdowns in there as in the required values are already pre-provided to you. So in this case, if you chose the target server type, when you click on the dropdown, it actually gives you all the supported values because we, uh, this is what we do. So, and the other thing that we actually do is, uh, for example, with this network prefix mask here, right? So this actually says it's an integer type. So we actually kind of validate it. it's a valid integer similar to the host names and things like that. If you have more than one BSD that you want to populate in there, you just have to pick the next column in the Excel sheet and give the information for that. So for example, you can just do something like this, and this will actually create two BSDs for you instead of one. So in this, uh, for this demo, I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, configure the VSC and uh, quickly run a VSC help check to show you how they how this works. So all you have to do is I'm going to actually define the VSC information in here now. Sorry to interrupt, but could you increase it again, maybe 150%? Um, sure. It's not allowing me to go up. Yeah, it's not allowing me to increase the font size. Okay, just keep going. Never mind. Okay. So I'm going to actually go ahead and put the prefix in here. I'm going to define a gateway. 
couldn't define a control IP here. Uh, I'm just going to give it a dummy value for system IP because I'm not doing anything here. And then I'm going to say VM name is VSC1. And my target server type is KVM in this case. And my target host is localhost. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. I'm going to actually copy copy this file that I've created, which is the VSC health demo, over to the test bed. Okay. Okay, now I actually have the VSC health demo file that I've just created. So one of the things that we do when we actually encounter an Excel file, like this one here, the VSC health demo, we actually create a deployment that is related with this health information. So what we do is when you run Metro AE and specify the Excel file, we'll create a deployment directory under the deployments folder. So I'll go into it in a little later. So I'm gonna run Metro AE. I'm gonna say VSC help. And then say VSC. And then enter. Now what it's doing it's actually reading the VSC health information and actually going ahead and creating the files for us now. As you can see, this is the deployment file folder that it creates. So it takes the common dot uh, common sheet from the Excel sheet and creates a common dot YAML for you. Okay. So this is all running the health check for the VSC to make sure everything is up and running. Okay. So now the VSC health check is finished. So if you look at the deployments folder now, under Noah's Metro AE, so there should be a VSC health demo deployment folder. So that's the one that we just created using the Excel sheet. So if you want to look at the values that we just defined in there, so going to the VSC study ammo here, and then it actually shows the values that we just populated in there. So this is actually just going through all the stuff that I talked about previously with all, where you can actually define multiple VSCs in different columns. And then the uh, list of actions are the supported values in drop downs in some cases. And uh, that's the end of the demo. Uh, I'm gonna actually hand it off to Mike to do the spreadsheet configuration. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name's uh, Mike Pagrush, and I'm um, going to share my screen here. So uh, the same spreadsheet support that uh, Ishwar demonstrated for uh, Metro AE config, uh, sorry, Metro AE uh, deployment is also supported for Metro AE configuration, and I'm going to demonstrate uh, the use of these spreadsheets um, for that purpose. Uh, so uh, the the way you start um, is you need a spreadsheet form uh, that includes the uh, configuration objects um, that you want to configure. Uh, the way that you do this is uh, that you use the Excel action to the Metro AE config command. Um, so uh, you can see uh, it in the command line, you would say Metro AE config Excel, and then you specify a list of each of the uh, configuration templates uh, that you would like to instantiate uh, into your form. Uh, in this example, I'm providing enterprise, uh, L3 domain, and zone. Uh, note that you would need quotes if there's uh, spaces due to bash. 
and the uh, config engine will uh, generate a form containing those templates for you, um, uh, as shown here, uh, Metroid uh, uh, user data form uh, one.xls. Uh, and then this is what the, uh, the spreadsheet would look like. Um, and note there's a tab for each of the templates that is provided. Uh, the next step would be to fill in the data. Uh, so uh, if you wanted to, to configure a, a set of enterprises, uh, domains, and zones, uh, you can see that on each tab you would fill in the, the information um, on, in the spreadsheet. Uh, the, the spreadsheet does provide some validation, um, basically the same kinds of validation that Ishwar showed, um, where drop-down lists can uh, show uh, choice values and uh, integers are checked for validity and uh, Boolean values are also checked for validity. Uh, once you have the, the, the data uh, filled out into the Excel sp uh, spreadsheet, uh, you can do a Metro AE config create and then you can provide the spreadsheet. Uh, note that you can actually provide as many spreadsheets as you like to the create command. You just keep listing them. Uh, so if you have uh, several different uh, spreadsheets uh, with various templates or various phases or, or whatnot, you can actually just list them all. And uh, Metro AE config will create them all uh, and the order does not matter. Uh, here you see the output of, uh, from the tool configuring the VSD. And you can see on the VSD itself that uh, the, uh, the enterprises that were specified in the uh, in the spreadsheet along with the domain and zone have been created on the VSD. So I'm going to actually show this uh, in action right now. Uh, I have a VSD in the lab and you know, it has no, uh, it's a completely clean uh, configuration. There's no uh, enterprises at all, uh, no configuration at all uh, on this VSD. Okay, so my first step is I'm going to create a form. Uh, so I'm going to create, uh, so uh, Metro E config Excel action, and I'm going to provide enterprise domain zone and subnet. So let's do that. Okay, so it created for me uh, an Excel form with four templates that I had specified in user data form one. So let's go into Excel and open user data form one. Okay, so you can see the tabs here. I can bump up the size a little bit. Uh, I'm going to create two uh, enterprises. Actually, let me know which one. Two, give them quick descriptions. Uh, I'm going to create uh, some domains off of those. Open soon. And a subnet. Subnet actually requires a network. And gateway. I will save this. And then I'll go back to my command line. Uh, I want to note that um, there is a set of environment variables that define some uh, configuration for Metro A config. Um, in particular, it needs to know what VSD to configure. Uh, so that is actually a VSD um, uh, URL, for instance. Uh, there's username, password, enterprise, and a couple paths that, uh, that can be configured uh, using the uh, environment variables. Uh, alternatively, you can specify on the, them on the command line, but it's uh, just clearer to use the environment variables. Um, so the next step is to uh, take that uh, Excel form that we just 
uh, filled out and provide a create on it. Okay, so it found the VSD version 20.10. Now it's going through and applying configurations. Okay, uh, all actions successfully applied. So if we go back to the VSD, you'll see uh, the Nuage 1 and Nuage 2, first and second enterprises that I had uh, created in there. Uh, so I'll click on that and you'll see if I start expanding this that the domain, the zone, and the subnet with uh, 10 slash 8 were all created. Um, so the other thing that can be done um, is there's a revert that Metro 8 can config provides that will reverse, um, will basically delete any configuration that was uh, applied uh, in this form. Uh, it won't remove anything outside of the um, outside of what was defined in the form so it's not going to touch any other configs other than the uh, enterprise uh, domain uh, zone and subnet revert those guys To the VSD and it's back to, to clean uh, where there's no uh, no uh, configuration uh, present. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to hand this off to uh, Adi um, uh, if you'd like to uh, to take over. Uh, sure. Yeah. So I can uh, share my screen. All right. Uh, so I'm Adi and I'm going to talk about how you can get more information about Metro AE. Uh, so we have a website, uh, devops.nuagenetworks.net, uh, and this is the best place to go uh, to get more information about using Metro AE. Uh, we have information about Metro AE and the various use cases that we support. Uh, we have blog posts that detail features and updates from the latest releases. Uh, you can access the Metro AE GitHub repo uh, directly from the website. Um, there's also information about how to download, set up, and use the Metro AE container. Um, and if you need the Metro AE script, uh, you can get it uh, from the GitHub repo, uh, which can be accessed from the website, or you can use the link that's on this slide, uh, which will be provided uh, after the webinar. Um, and if you run into any issues, uh, there are, is a frequently asked questions section on the website, uh, which contains information about some of the more common uh, issues that users have run into in the past. Uh, we also have blog posts with instructions on how to use certain capabilities of Metro AE, uh, particularly uh, with newer features uh, that, you know, with demos and things like that, uh, just more information. Uh, we also have all of our documentation for Metro AE on the website and it can be downloaded as a PDF. Uh, documentation, of course, can also be found from within uh, the GitHub, a uh, within the GitHub repo, uh, as well as within uh, the Metro AE container. Uh, we also have YouTube video tutorials uh, and that can be found uh, using the link on the slide. Uh, and if necessary, if you have uh, any issues, you can contact us via email. Uh, that email address uh, is as you can see on the slide, but it's also on the website. We have a contact us page, uh, so you can use that uh, to reach out to us if you have any issues. Uh, so with that, uh, we can uh, take some questions. Looks like we've got a couple questions in the chat. Um, Mike, the first question in the chat um, is about exporting from existing deployments into Excel. Can we ex export existing configurations into Excel? Uh, I, actually, you can. Um, in the uh, the repo uh, that's provided uh, in, the, in the repo version of the, the Metro, uh, it uh, has a uh, convert uh, deployment to uh, spreadsheet or Excel. I think it's convert spreadsheet to Excel. I have to look exactly what the command is. Um, but that actually, let me, let me just look quickly. Um, uh, 
Uh, I'm, uh, I'll convert its cell to. Oh, um, it might be the source. Sorry. Uh, generate deployment template, I believe. No, uh, convert schemas to Excel. That's what it's called uh, under the source directory. And that actually, with an argument, will allow you to take an existing deployment and fill in the spreadsheet with an existing deployment. Um, which uh, should be pretty um, uh, pretty powerful. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> the second question I see in the chat, <clears throat> excuse me, says, do you have any plans to continue to develop web GUI interface for Metro AE? <clears throat> At the current time, no. Um, we, when we made the decision to move uh, to open source, uh, Metro AE and to push the container out to Docker Hub. Uh, security scans showed that our uh, web GUI server was uh, a big hole and there were quite a few concerns about our ability to lock that down. We would have had to substitute a different server than the one we had implemented as a, it, it was, it was really just a, a beta, uh, if anything, if nothing else. <clears throat> so at this time, because of security concerns, we're not planning to resurrect that. Uh, if we have sufficient or interest in producing a GUI, we will certainly consider that. But as of right now, there have only been a few requests for that. Um, so the third question I see in the chat said, is the latest Metro A correctly configuring NTP on NUH, i.e. configuring NTP server via Ansible rather than trying to configure NTP on RHEL? Um, I know that in a previous release, we um, did, did something with uh, with NTP. Uh, Socket, did you do the work on that? Can you? Yes, I can, I can uh, tell more about it. So, uh, yes, uh, so in uh, to answer the question, uh, yes, we now do it correctly. Uh, the NTP is configured via the Ansible on the uh, NUH rather than by Metro. So uh, that is for the question. And previously, in the previous release, we used Crony for uh, uh, NTP setup. Now we have removed that. So uh, that answers the question. OK, great. Uh, next question I see says, does Metro AE fully support NSG bootstrapping on KVM and VMware platforms? And can it be done through Excel Sheet? Uh, absolutely and absolutely. Uh, so uh, and actually, so uh, we we actually do testing uh, constantly uh, every day on uh, bootstrapping NSGs, um, and any uh, any configuration uh, in a deployment file um, is is always supported in Excel. Um, so every configuration that we have in um, in Metro. So it is uh, everything that is. Configurable in in um, uh, Metro can also uh, be done in Excel, and that includes NSG Bootstrap. Um, one other thing about bootstrapping is that uh, Metro AE Config also supports bootstrapping. Um, so uh, NSG Bootstrapping. So in the Ansible version, um, so you you do it through you do bootstrapping through uh, the uh, the Ansible code, which will uh, will want to spin up uh, and deploy a VM uh, NSG. Uh, however, if you use config, you can apply uh, NSG bootstrapping directly to a VSD uh, through uh, through the conf uh, config templates. And uh, we've actually recently uh, demonstrated uh, bootstrap successful bootstrapping of NSGs uh, using that technique. Uh, next question, what if Excel sheet was updated since the deployment? Can new entities be updated this way? A kind of incremental update of the VSD configuration? Uh, we don't um, we don't have any Excel upgrading per se. Like so if you took an older Excel spreadsheet, um, we're not we don't have any ability now to make it newer however the format for excel 
uh, as long as as long as we don't remove required fields out of um, which we should very very rarely be doing, um, and if we do something like that, it would most likely be in a major release. Uh, then what if, and, I had, um, what if I had an Excel spreadsheet? I yeah. used it to apply a config, and then I made a change to some field. Can I update that way? Need to change. Uh, how do you mean I changed to one field? Uh, like I changed the I don't know VLAN name or the right. I went I went into this spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. I filled it out. Yeah. I said uh, Metro AE config cre create, and the uh, and it was successfully applied. Yeah. Now I I just edit that same Excel spreadsheet and I make some changes, whatever they might be. Can I now update my configuration using that? Um, if you use update, you can. Um, if you use create, then you'd want to revert the old one and then create the new one. Okay, but if I try to do use the update, isn't it what we've talked about as sledgehammer update, right? It, it is, yeah. So it will it will overwrite any any configuration, yes, on on BSD um, for anything that was um, uh, supplied. Um, I think uh, this particular question was with. Um, uh, the deployment, however, um, so the de for the deployment, um, what I had taken this is it, it, the format of the Excel spreadsheet has changed, right? So if we if, if we've changed or, or added fields uh, mm -hmm. within the deployments, uh, so we don't have any conversion com uh, conversion. However. Um, we strive very strongly to maintain backward compatibility. Um, so uh, you can always just add fields at will uh, to the to the spreadsheets, and they will, um, as long as you spell them correctly, then uh, they will be um, accepted. Um, and then we uh, we'll, we'll try not to uh, remove any um, uh, old required fields. Cool. All right, next question is, is it possible to have an ability to describe the full setup in one YAML file instead of a set of files? <clears throat> I think this, the short answer there is at the current time, no. Um, the deployment is a deployment. Well, I mean, you could have one Excel spreadsheet and a, that, that would do it. But in terms of YAML, uh, we require multiple files. And that's actually for simplicity as well. Um, so what happens when you try to combine um, a whole set of different YAML files into one monolithic one is that it gets uh, it's much more the format becomes much more complicated um, because then you, you have to you have to have different fields for for each component anyway. Uh, but yes, the uh, Excel spreadsheets um, uh, if you if you use those then uh, that would uh, uh, be uh, a single file with the entire deployment. Um, <clears throat> then the next question is about configs. How would you recommend randomizing the inputs from an Excel spreadsheet? Uh, and then Hassam goes ahead and describes his use case. <clears throat> um, I think probably best, Hassam, if we take that offline and we talk about it. Uh, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I think uh, there's probably some way we can help. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, the next question is, can we configure BGP and policy via Excel? On the VSD and policy, uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, so using uh, Metro E config, um, we uh, can uh, uh, absolutely. Um, so you just generate the uh, the Excel form for uh, whichever BGP configs uh, that that uh, you're. Um, uh, that you want to uh, apply and uh, and the policy um, as long as we have the templates that support those um, we have um, we have 40 no no sorry we have uh, what 80 um, or so yeah, templates. I it's, it's approximately 80 yeah of the most common um, uh, configurations uh, so it should be uh, um, uh, very likely it's, it's already there um, and if not then uh, we can consider adding it a similar question next is, can we add static routes BGP on vPort, or is there a plan for that in the future? Uh, yeah, it should be a similar thing. Um, as to the, any, uh, if we have the templates for it, which um, uh, I know we have a vPort templates, 
Um, I don't know directly if we have static routes, but I, I, I bet we do. So we, we have a static route template. Uh, okay. yes, I see. Okay, so, great. And I think one other thing to note here while we're talking about it is that we deliver, you know, approximately 80 of these templates, one per feature that we support. But there's uh, certainly opportunity to customize and produce your very own, your own templates. Uh, you can take the uh, templates that we ship and you can modify them to suit your use case. And it could be that you can provide, that even if it's something that we don't support directly, it can be customized so that you can use the tool anyway. 